Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Welcome. Yes, it is. It's gorgeous today. You said it. We will be getting started here shortly. Thank you for joining on this beautiful Tuesday. You could have been outside doing something else, so I appreciate it. Got a fun project for today. It's Santa week. Comment as you're coming in here on this gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. Alrighty, let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to my Tuesday Facebook Live with the Wexford Stamper. My name is Barb Reed and I'm the Wexford Stamper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Pennsylvania and I have a blog called the wexfordstamper.blogspot.com where you can find all my ideas and things recorded. And I also have a YouTube channel. Just search for the Wexford Stamper and subscribe and see all my great holiday ideas for this week. That's perfect, Joanne. That is perfect. A little of everything, a little crafting and a little nice weather. Can't beat that. All righty, today we are going to making this adorable little Santa gift bag. And what it has inside is a cello bag filled with little kisses that look like Santa hats. And these are in all your grocery stores. They're just kisses. They're regular milk chocolate kisses, but they are decorated like Santa hats. So I thought that was like the perfect thing to put inside this box. This box is quick and easy to make. You're gonna love it. And I think all those people that would receive this gift would love it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about some of the materials that I'm going to be using first. All right, stamp sets. Okay, to make my tag up here, I'm going to be using the perfectly plaid stamp set, the ho, ho, ho right there. And then from the banner year, I found a treat so sweet. So I thought that was perfect combination of sentiments there, but you can always use whatever you have on hand. I made this little um, little tag using this tag punch, Label Me Lovely. This is in the regular annual catalog. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. So this is a great one. Get lots and lots of great use from this. So that's what I used to cut out my, my little um, tag there. And lots of this is just punch art. If you're a fan of punch art, cutting out punches and making little animals and things like this, this one is for you definitely because Santa is super easy to make with just some of the dies. Okay, now you'll notice here on his hat, he has a little bit of a scalloped edge on that. And the way I did that is I took a one inch um, thick piece of Whisper White, one inch by four, and then I scalloped the top and the bottom using this die from the Stitched Be Mine. I use this die set a lot. It isn't just for Valentine's Day, believe me. I love it. So that one I found there. You might have another die that cuts a scallop. So whatever you have is what's best to use there. All right, well, let's go ahead and start by making the box. This is super, super easy. You're going to love this. All right, you're going to start with a piece of cardstock that is eight inches by eight inches, okay? Then you're going to grab your scoring board. I'm using real red here, I don't think I said that. I am using real red, but you can use um, Poppy Parade, you can use Cherry, Cobbler, whatever red mood you're in, you can certainly use. All right, on the first side, since both sides are the same length, just pick a side, and you're gonna go ahead and score at three and five. Okay, then you're going to turn your paper, and you're gonna score at two and six. That's it, that is it. 
Yes, that is very, very easy scoring. Hi, Jerry. Oh, yes, this would be perfect for them. They'll love it. Nice to see you, Jerry. We miss you. All right, so this is all our scoring, and I'm going to grab my bone folder and just crease down all these score lines. All right, now let me show you a template here that is how you need to cut this. This is really all the cuts that you need to make here. Okay, so if you look here at the paper that I just scored, you want to cut it, you want to hold it first so that you have these short panels on the left and right. Okay, this way would be the, the thicker panel. So you want to make sure it's this way and think about that center section being in the landscape position. Okay, so now when you're looking at that and you look at my template here, we're just going to cut these out so they can be our flaps to pull the box together. Okay, so where are our flaps? Right here and right here. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over on this side because I can see my lines a little better. So I'm just going to cut up on those flaps. Okay. And then I'm going to take a little wedge out just to help them come together a little bit better. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it this way. Same exact thing from the opposite side. There we go. And you could put anything in it, Jerry. I put the little, um, I don't know if you were on when I started. I got these little um, kisses that look like the Santa hats, but you can put anything. It's lots of room in there, lots of space, lots of great ideas you could come up with. All right, so now my piece looks just like my template. Now we're going to put it together, and this is a super easy um, part too. You're just going to pull in your two tabs that you created. Today I'm going to use my Tombow, but you can use your adhesive of choice. I would go with Stamp and Seal Plus or maybe some tear and tape would be a good idea. All right, then I'm going to bring up either side of the box and just make sure that the side panel lines right up with my fold. Okay, and just hold that for a second, turn it over, do the same thing here. Here's my tab. I'm going to line up the edge of the panel with the fold of the tab. Okay. All right. Now, we are almost done our box, believe it or not. Oh, yes. That would be a great idea, too. Cookies. Of course. I'm excited. I can't wait to get into cookie baking mode. Love it. All right. So then I took the last two um, flaps here and I'm just going to bring up the front of the box and then just bring those to the sides and secure them. That's how easy your box is. It doesn't get much easier than that gals. Okay so there is your box. All right so now let's talk about some of the other pieces that I'm going to be bringing in. All right, now I used for my punch art for my Santa, I used the layering circles. These are a must have. If you don't have these in your craft stash, you need to get them. This is what you need. Now I pulled out the ones that I'm going to be using. I'm actually going to use the largest scallop, and that is going to be in Whisper White. Okay, so that's going to be part of the beard. And then the largest circle I have in petal pink. That's going to be old Santa's head. And then I cut out a smaller circle. Let me see what size this circle is. I have my ruler here. This is about a one and five eighths inch diameter circle. And that I'm going to cut to make his mustache. And I'll show you how I did that really simple. And then my other punch art pieces are a lot smaller. I have my nose and that I cut out using my one half inch circle punch. Looks like that. 
and then my two little black eyes and I cut those out using my quarter inch circle punch. Okay, you can cut them freehand out of paper if you don't have these punches, but um, that's how I made my Santa, just all different types of punches, which makes it fun and easy for everybody. All right, so let's pull these away. I also, this is the little um, holly that I cut out for his the side of his um, hat, and this is from the Banner Year, and I just cut it, fussy cut it out after I colored it with real red and shaded spruce. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that away for now. Oh yes, last things here, I wanna make sure I talk about everything. These are the handles for your bag. They're cut at one half inch by 11 inches, okay? And then I have one Whisper White cut at one half by 11, and that's gonna go around the back part of your box. Okay, so that's the piece we're gonna be starting with first. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna push these off for now. I'm gonna go ahead and first thing I'm gonna do is put my Santa head on. Okay, so now his head is gonna go a little bit off the top and we're gonna have to cut it off a little bit. Sounds painful, I know, but hey, Jean. How are you? Yes, we're having fun, it's Santa week. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just put a little bit of Tombow on the back of my Santa head, understanding that the top part is going to go off the top of the box because we need a little bit extra at the bottom for his, um, his big old beard. Okay, so there's that. And I'll take my scissors and I'll just chop that off because this part's gonna be covered with the fur from his hat. All right, so there we go. Now, let's bring in the beard. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the beard a little bit above the center, not exactly the center. Okay, and this will kind of be personal preference, but yeah, that's good for me. Okay, you want it to just about, just a little bit outside of the um, circle, but not too far outside. And don't worry about that straight line because that's gonna be covered up with his little mustache. Hi, Rhonda. Oh, nice to see you, Rhonda. All my buds are here today, love it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some Tombow on the beard. And that goes right there. All righty. Yep, yeah, that looks just about right. Okay, now this is the probably the trickiest part and it's really not that tricky, but before I cut his mustache, I'm gonna put his little nose on, okay? Because that'll give us an idea where exactly we want the um, mustache to go if his nose is already on there. It sounds weird what I'm saying, but you know what I mean. All right, so let's go ahead. I put a little mini glue dot on the back of his nose. And remember, this was a half inch circle punch. And I'm just gonna put it right there in the center of the face with a, a, almost half of it over the beard part that we already put on there. Okay, all right, now let's work on the mustache. Oops, got some extra goop here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the circle in half. All right, now I'm going to curve the straight end to make it more like the bottom. So I'm gonna start a little bit lower here and then I'm gonna come up to the top and then curve to the other side just like that, okay? So I'm just kind of curving the top straight edge. And then what I did, just to make the um, mustache look a little, hi, Diane, hi, Catherine, welcome. All right, I put this on top and I cut the same exact pattern just so that it was kind of symmetrical, that he didn't have a crazy mustache. 
Okay, then what you're going to do is you're just going to put the end part of the circle under the nose, okay? And then it looks like a mustache. I was like shocked how good it looked. I don't have any drawing ability or anything, so I love punch art. And when you can make something adorable using punch art, I am on board. All right, so there's his mustache. Is that cute or what? I mean, seriously, there's his mustache, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the top. All right, here is his little band for on top. Okay, now this is going to stick off a little to on top of the box, but that's okay. All right, so, but before we do that, we're going to adhere this around the sides and the back, just so it gives it a little bit of continuity. I don't know, I just felt like that was important. So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm going to use some tearing tape and lay a piece of tearing tape all the way across this piece here. This piece is a half an inch, okay? And then let's bring this in. I'm gonna take off the tearing tape backing as best I can, I probably should have my, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna start on the back using the center, as close as we can get. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So I'm using the center and I'm just taking it around the back and making sure it comes right up to the top of the box, okay? And then, once we get to the front, as soon as it gets around to the front, you can just put it like that, okay? And then we'll do the same thing here. Now you're gonna notice that they're not, doesn't go all the way around and that's okay because this piece here is gonna come up and cover that, all right? So let's go ahead and glue this one down. I'm going to, now I'm, I'm going to go with tear and tape again because this is important placement and I don't want to use the wet glue for this one. All right, so I put the tear and tape across the front there because this two pieces here, it doesn't really matter that they don't um, match up exactly in the front because everything will be covered with the band from the hat. Okay, so now he has the band on his hat. All right, let's go ahead and bring in his eyeballs. Okay, remember I cut these out, I punched these out using a one quarter inch circle punch. And before I put them on, if you notice here, I give Santa a little bit of life in his eyes by using a gel pen and just making a little curved line along the side of his eye, like that. I learned this before when I was making punch art for something else, that it kind of gives the eye a little bit of depth and it makes it look a little more like they're actually alive. <laughs> so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my glue here and I'm going to add the eyes right there. Okay, let me grab my pick tool. And we will put, oops. There we go. Okay, oh, stuck on my finger, there we go. There's one Santa eye. And I usually place them so that the little um, lines that I made with the glue, I'm uh, not the glue, the gel pen, are they're facing the same way, like that. Okay, everybody see so far? So far so good, everybody? 
Let me know if you have any questions. All right, well, the box is done, folks. All I gotta do now is my um, tag and a few other little embellishments. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna grab my little holly. And again, I'm gonna get one of the mini dimensionals and put it back here on the back of my holly leaf and grab off the top with my pick tool and then just put it right here, just to give a little bit of color to his hat, the fur along his hat. Okay, now let's see, we are gonna work on the handles next. Okay, remember we are using real red and these are one half inch by 11 inches. Okay, just remember all these dimensions will be on my blog by the end of the week. So don't worry about writing anything down. And this, I will be putting this um, recording right on my YouTube channel as soon as we're done here. So you can always go back if you need it sooner. I'm gonna take my handy dandy tear and tape and I'm gonna put a little piece of tear and tape on the end of both of my strips. Get all this other stuff out of here. There we go. Okay, now, how do we put these on? Pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and take my pick tool and get the backings off. And then I'll show you what I do. You're going to have to put a little bit of a twist into your handle. So the way you're gonna do it is you're going to first line up either side just inside where his face starts, okay? And then you're gonna grab the other end and you have to twist it a bit. And then you just adhere to the other side, right about where his face starts or the side of the outside of his head. So that is the first little handle. We're gonna do the same thing on the back. And I liked putting this little white on the back as well. It just made it have a nicer touch on the back. All right, let's get this last handle on. The tear and tape will hold for you. It won't spring off. It is really good. You can also use um, the Stampin' Seal Plus or you can use wet glue, but with wet glue, you will have to hold it a little bit longer. And there is the back. All right, so there you have it. There is the, the box all done, except for our tag. So let's go ahead and get ready to make our tag. And as I told you before, the tag is in Whisper White, and I use the Label Me Lovely, here he is. The Label Me Lovely stamp, I'm sorry, punch. And then this one has a great punch that you can turn your tag to the side, stick it in there, and then it will put a hole in the punch for, in, in the um, tag for you as well. Or if you wanna put like a slit in the tag, depending on if you wanna put um, a thicker, ribbon through it or something. So I like that added feature of that punch as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping with this. We are going to use two stamps and I just went through my stash, see what I had that would go well. And I found the Ho 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 from the Perfectly Plaid, perfect for a Santa bag, right? And then I found a treat so sweet. So you can use that if you're putting some sweets in there. Chocolate would be good. Sand tarts would be good too. All right, so let's go ahead and do our stamping. I'm going to do my ho, ho, ho in real red. And that's just gonna go across the top of the tag. There we go, a ho, ho, ho. And then my A Treat So Sweet, I'm going to bring in my Memento Black and probably putting it on up, right side up would be a better thought. A Treat So Sweet. 
And there it is. Isn't that cute? So look through all your stamps, see what you have. I bet you have something that would work perfectly on your punch, your punched tag. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to attach that to the bag. We're going to use a little piece of the black and white Baker's twine, just like this. Gonna put it through the tag. And I just attached mine right to the front right handle. But that's really wherever you think you'd like to put it would be the place you'd put it. Then I just brought it around. I evened out the ends of my twine. And then I just put a little um, bow there. Okay. I love Baker's twine. It's right up there with beautiful ribbon. I just think it's such a fun, fun thing to use. All right, and then I'm gonna make those a little smaller and let's cut these extras off. And there it is. Now, let me talk a little bit about what I used here. I used the real red satin ribbon to close the bag. And then I wanted to show you in the catalog, there's actually some of these super cute little um, plastic bags, treat bags. I am on page 152 in the new catalog and they have several things here. This is called Packaging Basics. There's a cellophane bag here. There's the printed gusseted bags and these are the ones that um, I, I have here. They have little pom-poms on them but they look like snowflakes to me, right? So that's what I use. So you can get some of these gusseted bags with your order as well, but they have some really, really nice um, packaging ideas here. There's some mini um, paper pumpkin boxes that you can put together and put goodies in, as well as the pizza boxes. So don't forget about this great page. There's a lot of great packaging ideas there as well. All right, so. I just took one of the gusseted bags, put in some of the Santa hat kisses, and then tied it with the real red ribbon. And that's what I got. So that is my project for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share this craft with someone else um, that you think would enjoy it. All right, so. For next time, which is Thursday, we're gonna stick with our Santa. And we're gonna make this cute little Santa chocolate treat. Okay, so this will be on Thursday. And I will show you the stamp sets and things that I use to make those. And I'll even tell you where I got the cute little Santas. So um, join me on Thursday at three o'clock and we will keep on having fun with our Santa week. So thank you for joining me today, ladies, and I hope to see you on Thursday. Take care, bye-bye.